Okay. The meeting to order. Can we please have it quiet? Thank you. The meeting is now called to order. Uh, Laurie, would you present? Uh, the reason we're here for this meeting is to present to to discuss and vote on the uh, contract with uh, China Communications for Cable uh, Service Bulk Mailing Agreement. <coughs> Anybody have anything to say? We can't hear her way up here. I think there's haven't there been some revisions since we last met relative yes. to the rates. Maybe we could discuss those so that everyone Absolutely. knows what we're talking about. That's right. That's what we're that's what we're here for. Okay. Well, it looks like the allowable increase went from 6% down to 5%, and that was the only real change. change. And it asked for that change, and that's what he was able to do. So where does that leave us relative to what we're looking at for a rate for our unit to charge? Your taxes, the taxes and the connection charges and all those things that you have to pay outside of the basic cable itself charge. He was supposed to give you those amounts. So and they're actually in here. They're in here. They're in in here. here. Okay. It has um, a packet charge that would be when it comes to 1708. For Stoneville Heights, the average per unit comes to 1692. Doesn't that funny? Eight cents up and eight cents down. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, given. Right. But we will also if still have a shortfall say of $2.47 a month. And if we increase it to something like $17.50, that shortfall will be covered. Um, it co will cover some of the empty units if we have one. Um, so with an extra $72.53 a month is what it come out to that we would have extra. Well, you know, I. I don't think that we should be expecting anyone to subsidize an, an empty unit. But I, you know, given it's eight cents, I mean, I don't, why can't we just hold? I'd like to see us hold the rate at seventeen dollars per tenant, per resident. But then we would be then paying the extra two dollars and forty-seven cents a month, a month per person, okay. per, per, and per unit. Yeah. But you said it worked. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. You said it worked yeah, out to seventeen oh eight yep. and sixteen ninety two. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're saying to go, your feeling is to go to 17. It's at 17. It's at 17. Right, keep it at 17. Right. And you want us to pay the 247 per unit each Maybe month? Maybe I'm missing something. You said that the average works on yeah. the stone bill for 1696, uh, 1692, mm -hmm. and package charge 1708. Right. So why can't we hold it at 17? Well, if we do, there's going to be a short $2.47 a month. So if we increase to something like now it's 17, what he's suggesting is we increase it to $17.50, which will cover the shortfall if we do have. But you're going to profit from that, and you shouldn't. Let me ask you a question. Can I ask a question? Um, so would you let me finish my statement? So if you have increased to $17.50, we would have that $72.53. Some months we would use it and some months we would not, depending on how many units were empty and for how long. Yeah, that's that makes sense to me. Though. It mm -hmm. is, but we could, if we don't, if we don't, we're going to have to do, pay the shortfall. Do we have money to do that? No. Right. She, she had her hand up first. Okay. All right. Can you help me understand? 16, we, we, we're 31 units of Pakachad Village of federal housing, as is as are the 60 units up here. Mm -hmm. Okay? If the rate at Stoneville Heights for 60 units of federal housing is 1696, then why are the 31 units of federal housing at Pakachad Village 
Why are they 1708? He's saying the difference is due to how fees are calculated. You wrote that in there. That's, that's what the difference is. I mean, I would have thought they'd be the same. So would I. Because eight cents, I mean, yeah. eight cents up on one, eight cents down on the other. It's silly. It would have been nice if they did send a representative to get more answers. I mean, they've always been this. The rates, it's always been the same times ninety units. You know. Because even though package art is split federal and state, it's still one bulk contract for package art. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it's. So how do you? Yeah. You know, how do you? Do you have to uh, court, do that? Um, Proportionately based on federal and state housing? Have to divide the bill. The package out between state and federal by the number of units every month. Just through the chair. Now, if we went the way Ian is suggesting um, at 17 and we covered the 247 a month for each unit, can we afford to do that or not? Do you, have it in the, do you think you have it in the budget to cover it? On the federal side, yes. On, on the state, state side, no. we really don't. But on the state, state side, side excuse me, Alice had her hand up next. Oh. Were you, are you through? No, no he's still excuse asking. me just a minute. Are you through yet? <coughs> no, I wasn't. Okay. But she was explaining it to me. And Go ahead. Go ahead and explain it. So on the federal side, you do have the money to cover it, but not on the state side. Now, Alice, at the uh, financial course that we took a couple of Saturdays ago, it was explained how the state and the federal are not going to be able to live up to what they are. They have said that the state is going, the federal is going to be cutting their subsidies by 18 percent, and we don't know what the state is going to be cutting. So with this, with that knowledge, I don't think that the housing board or the uh, the bank, the whatever we have, uh, will be able to cover these shortfalls in that because it will take away from other things that are more important than the television. So the idea of increasing it either to 1725 or 1750 per unit to me would be the sensible thing to do so that we would be covered and we won't have a shortfall. Okay. Now, just two, two questions you need to help me understand. At Packetog Village, it's only the original 59 units that are state housing now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're talking about eight cents, they're eight cents over a month. Right, if we left it at 17. So the rest of it would be subsidized and the HUD subsidy. So we're talking about 59 units to the state. It would be the issue, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's 59 times 8 cents. And as long as I keep the units rented, right. we don't have a problem because right. it's covered. You know I mean? well, I mean, if we go a couple months without having a unit rented, then the housing authority has to pick up that money. But when was the last time that you come into something like that where we you had it had within a couple months? Because I, I know I talked to you about this a few times about how that works because some people have said how the apartments were empty, but you were either working into it or they were paid up until the beginning of the following month. I haven't so that's why you couldn't film. But right. So you, you haven't had that? No. And plus you've got a waiting list that I understand all the way around. All the waiting list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to quibble over pennies, but it seems as though, I mean, the federal housing units should be, they're under the 17, and, and the, the state units, the 59 state units, are over by 8 cents. I just, you know, I just can't see... To me, it should all be the same. We get money from the federal government. We do not get money from the state. The state. Right. So when anything comes in from the state, we cannot use federal money to pay for that. I am well aware of that, Dr. Chairman. Yes. I just think it's such a small amount of money. I think that we should offset it. Do we have the funds to do it? Mm -hmm. Oh. 
that's, that's I, think we should, I think we should keep it at the 17, and if it becomes a problem down the road, then, okay. then we'll, we'd have to revisit it. But we just changed it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. We're just, right. I mean, oh, we're I still trying to get everybody to pay the 17 from the 15. You know what I mean? So right. to turn around and change it again, I think right. it's... I think if we just keep the 17 until we notif you know, notice that there's a problem, right now we don't have a problem. So you want to sign it? I'll through the chairman. Mm -hmm. So basically you want us to sign this contract as it is, and then the extra money that's there for the state, we're going to cover it, mm -hmm. and everybody is happy across the board. That's what I would like to see happen. Well, that's, that's exactly why I asked him last, the last time we met. We could do something about those rates. So, based on that, I would like to make a motion that we maintain the $17 per month currently being charged at both Stoneville and Pakatog Village. And in addition, we um, signed the contract with Charter Communications today. And we cover the offset? Well, Should why, you have we have, or offset? why don't we have one, one uh, vote first to go up, accepting the fee, and then we can vote on all right, then I'd make a motion. I withdraw my first one, and I'll make a motion that we maintain the $17 per month rate per cable for both Stoneville Heights and Package Hill Village residents. Do we have a second? You have some work to raise your hand. So I'll second it. But I don't know. Yeah. Uh, can you speak? I don't know. Mm -mm. Is it okay to speak? Yes, go ahead. If you're going to stick to the $17 for quite some time, suppose me that goes up again and we're going to have to be changed every time her bill gets higher and higher, like they've been doing. We started 8, 13, 15, and 17 on that same contract. Mm -hmm. So the tenants have no choice. They've got to pay that balance whether they want or not. That's right. I don't and think it's fair. Private homes because it's independent. We always go back to private homes. We're a housing right here. We no, moved here it's because we're low income. She's talking. And, and it's independent living. When I moved here at the housing authority, they don't have a title of independent living and tell the tenants before they move in, and that it's the same as if you take a tenement outside of this place. We moved here because it's low income because you can't afford the rents in a tenement. Every time we hear a meeting or somebody's talking, it's always independent living. If we're going to live like a separate tenement, you're sure you're going to pay more rent or they're going to raise it. We come here because we can't afford it. It's low income. And all of a sudden you hear independent living all the time. Which is confusing because they don't tell you when you apply for this apartment. So I experienced, I experienced even with Laurie when I first brought this up at a meeting about the cable. You could pay basic, they took the channels away, and they're still charging you the same thing every time it's changed. You don't get more channels, you don't get them back. They change to digital, you've got to get into more aggravation. When you're happy with the basic, but you're paying more money all the time and they take the channels away. You're not fighting to get our channels back on basic and paying more money. That's the way, it's, it, that's the way it should be looked at. In other words, if you've got a unit in an apartment and a person don't want television, they still got to pay for that thing in the wall. That's right. Because and that's, that's not fair to the tenants. And we're going to I don't know what they did rules. in the past. I don't know. But when I you only know, know my experience. Yes. I just want to say, no matter what you do with Tatter, in my opinion, <coughs> they raise the rates all the time, constantly. Yes, Whether I Whether you agree or disagree. That. I understand. And we're going we're, we're to do a contract with Chatter. The last prior meeting, they wanted to go at 6%. We kind of discussed it. We, they noticed we weren't happy. So they came back this time the same 5%. We cannot control everything with Charter. Charter does what it's want. And the big, one of the biggest reasons why we have problems with Charter is there's nobody else. Unless you go to DISC or something like that. But Charter is the main thing. There's no Verizon or anything else. 
And what we're doing here today is trying to help you by offsetting it. We're not against you. We're trying to help you. It's not us. It's Char today. Is the one that continues. I go home and every time I get my bill, it seems like it goes up two bucks. Mine does too. But I mean, it, and, and that's charter. It's yeah. just like you got the local cable committee. They're not involved with all that. They have a contract with charter. Okay. The charter addresses the prices and what they're going to raise it and what they're going to set it at. It's I'm not us. I'm not complaining about the paying the seventeen dollars. I'm just complaining about they take the channels away from you and you're paying the same thing. How come you can't speak to them about that? Why? Why? We're only on basic. That's all that you're getting they for that money. They did it digitally, and it, they do it. They did it at my house the same way. Right. Well, of course you're, I'm not happy about it any more than you yeah, are. Well, you you wouldn't want to hear what my cable bill is. You can pay more for channels and, and, and other stuff on your own, plus pay for what you're getting at the housing. That's two separate bills. If you want more channels and more stuff, yes. But a right. person that just going on basic with the housing, and we had all nice channels on basic, and they started taking them away, and we had to pay the same amount. Yeah. But you take a person that don't want television or something, when they move in, they still got to pay for that unit. Okay, there's no, there's no breakage. Stop here. I wasn't here before. <clears throat> okay, well we, we need to stop. I think you, we understand what you're saying. Okay. We appreciate your thoughts, <laughs> but we do have to move on. Okay. Ian, would you please? I, I was just going to point out to Mrs. Morrison's question, probably to a lot of other people's questions, um, when I was still at the senior center, we had a presentation from charter right. um, executives out there. And if you listen to what they say, what they ex how they explain the loss of channels is that those channels are still analog channels, and they're switching to all digital service. And they claim, and I don't know whether it's true, all I can do is tell you what, what they told said. us, is that they have to buy a package of channels from the, I forgot what they call, but whoever it is that provides the channels. Charter buys a, a, a package of channels. You can't pick and choose the channels. They've, they're switching to digital. Those channels that they've dropped out of the basic expanded level of service that we have here at the Housing Authority are analog channels that have not yet been switched over. And the only way that you can have them, those channels still, is if you have a cable box and you yeah, have to yeah. pay for the cable box every month. And you know, but that's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Morrison. I'm I don't mean sorry. to be rude, but. That's Charter's policy. That's got nothing to do with the Housing Authority. And it's regrettable that they've taken those channels out of the basic expanded level of service. But that's an argument that you'd have to have with them. There's, there's really nothing that we can do. And like Mr. Page said, there is no alternate cable company in this community. You know, a Verizon BIOS is not an option here. They, we're, they're not wired for it. Comcast doesn't service our area. Unless you have Dish TV or one of the other satellite television services, which we don't allow here, there is nothing you can do. There's no competition to charter. And that definitely is a problem. Fortunately, I think, it, I think it's a good thing that we, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that it looks like we're going to be able to maintain the prices that we've got right now because, as Ms. Brennan pointed out, it hasn't been that long since your rates went up to 17. Yeah, well, I, I'm not complaining about the price because it is high for Laura. She has to pick up the balance, but we don't know her bill each month either, what she's paying or what they're adding on to her bill for her to increase mm -hmm. our monthly payment either. But what you're talking about, we've gotten like it's $29.95 if you want to add on your channels, you have to pay for them. We have gotten that in the mail and I have them with me. They do try to get you to pay more money to right. take your channels. If you have a question on billing or anything like that through Auburn Housing, you have the right as, um, no, no, to Wayne, ask. No, no, this is something different. You're, you're dealing with housing, but if you want extra channels or something, they're telling you. Oh, no, I understand. But you have to mention about Laurie, you don't know how much she's paying. No, I don't. Or stuff no. like that. You have the right to request a copy of the bill. Yes, I know. As, okay. I just want to make sure you know she that. She has helped me with that. Okay. You had your hand up. Yes, I was just going to say that uh, the residents could have elected earlier on, uh, when I first moved in here, they could have elected not to have obtained cable services. Mm -hmm. If they didn't want them, they didn't have to get them. I don't know what changed about that, but when I first moved in here, 
And there are other tenants here that can state that same thing. If you did that, you're going to be paying a lot, lot more. You can't do it now. No, no, no. I'm saying for people that didn't want the cable service. Yeah. Right, but you can't do that now. It's part of the But if you want a TV, you'd be paying a lot more than you would, you know, if you drive that roof, in other words. You'd be paying a lot more today. I mean, it's up to $70, $80 a month for a lot of people. And everyone I has understand. to pay because it's a bulk contract. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a bulk contract that we get a lower rate. We pay a much larger rate than that for our homes because it's not a bulk contract. I understand. And that's why you get a lower rate because it's a bulk contract. So you don't remember when. So everyone has to pay the same you better pay for the, the, the thing is, is being part of the committee, I think, um, I know we got this knocked down a little bit and stuff like that, but we need to have more power when we're doing the contracts and, you know, have meetings with them to resolve all our problems. It shouldn't be charter says you're going to do this and that's it. You know, we need to work for, for ourselves too as a committee for you people to make this contract work both ways, not just one. But isn't it the town and charter that sets the rates? Not, not no, the housing authority. So. The th housing authority doesn't. I know there is a contract, yes. Joe? Joe Hamill from the Cable Committee. Um, basically, the State Department of Public Utilities sets the rate for charter, and then charter passes that on. There's, You have a separate contract for housing, the town. We negotiated for two and a half years which are for the town contract. So, and it's, it, when they, they're, the, the, like the 10% senior discount, uh, we are, I think Massachusetts is the only uh, charter franchise that gets that 10%. It's not in any other state, so we've kept that. And they wanted to eliminate that from the contract, and we made sure that stayed in. So does it look like we, we're, as the town, are we ever going to have another option other There's, than charter? We have put out requests for uh, Verizon, Comcast, you know, that it's a non exclusive contract. So Fred's TV cable could come in, and if they want to wire the town, go ahead, they can do it. But they have to pay a franchise fee to the town. I know that as a fact is true because I, I was on it for up to 10 years ago, and and that's the, every year, every time they come up with a contract, they try to go with somebody else and get somebody else to come in, and they just don't do it. When you just went through with that with the selectmen board, there was a cable guy there talking to that board about prices and contracts and all this. I watched it on TV. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that was. He's got, he still has the board. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeff. That was the public hearing we had. Um, December? Last December? I would say it was, yes. I, I, I don't remember the date, around, but that was the public the comment section. You know, town officials came in um, and they had their say, and, uh, and then residents could speak to Charter. For the representatives from Charter. Is there anyone else who has not spoken? Right. He, he has spoken and oh, you I'm have sorry. spoken. Is there anyone else here that needs to speak on the subject? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I think we need to move on. All right? Uh, are you ready to vote, board? So you're ready. Yes, there's a motion and a second. There's, there's a motion and a second. So it, all in favor of holding the contract at $17? Aye. 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 No, no opposed. Okay, so the motion carries. 
since this was the only uh, subject, yes. we, need we need to make a motion. 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 Yes. motion. Oh yes, thank you. Um, we now need a motion to uh, to approve the contract. I'll make a motion to approve the contract. Who second? Who seconded? Which choice? Choice. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, how much was it approved for? Before? Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, we can't hear. Much. We're we're going to pay the offset. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, seeing this is the only item on the agenda, are we now ready to adjourn? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All right. Voting. Vote the. Oh, all in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 Aye.